Greetings from Motoga TV Studio. Alright, in today's video, the God servant Apostle Orami Osai unveils a deep secret to the body of Christ. Do wait to listen to it as you pick the point. May God Almighty bless you. Amen. So when you see some symptoms in your life, it is proof, it is evidence of the fact that you are an altar in speaking. The first first symptom that is suggestive of the fact that the demonic altar is speaking is called sustained confusion. Sustained confusion. Sustained confusion. It is not the will of God for a believer to be confused, but when you find a man in a state of sustained confusion, and I need to tell you this quickly, that it is possible for someone that is anointed to be plagued with confusion. There is an evidence that the hand of God is upon you, but a man is plagued with sustained confusion. It is suggestive of the fact that there is an altar that has been raised to fight him. Okay? So we also have sustained disfavor. People do stuff, but when you attempt to do it, you will find out that hey, all the doors will be closed to you. Sustained disfavor. And this sustained disfavor also has applications in relationship and marital matters. Sustained disfavor. Number three is unnatural poverty. The person is hardworking. The person is focused. But the works of the person's hands doesn't translate to anything that is profit. Doesn't translate to profit. When you see that, it is suggestive of a spiritual situation. Are you there? Lack of conception. Lack of conception. When there is difficulty in conception, are you following me? Okay, that's number one. Lack of conception. Then number five is what we call accident prone. Accident prone. Accident prone. You escaped one now, you escaped another one. In thriller fed, you just escaped narrowly. And every day you are giving testimony of how you are dodging, how you are escaping. Uh, accident prone. These are suggestions that the spirit being is haunting you. The spirit being knows your address, has been, he knows your name, he knows your location, and is trying seriously to exercise vengeance on your life. Accident prone. If you don't deal with that, then that's number what? Number six, is the shadow of death where there is an inner knowing that you will not live long. Inner knowing that death is accompanying you. There's an inner knowing of the presence of death around your life. These are suggestive, suggestive of an active altar accompanying you. 
Let me take you just one more point before I begin the job for the night. Just one more point. If there's anybody here you see like someone like a madman in your dream consistently, a madman. Right? If that kind of stuff you see. I'm not saying that God is telling me that. So I'm just telling you because of my experience in counseling and in deliverance, I can tell you this for free. That if what you see is like someone that is mad, always fooling you around, what is happening to you is that someone has set up an altar and they have released the spirit of madness on your life. The day your liberty comes, in that dream you will be able to confront the madman and say, from that day, that spirit will stop following you. Now, is there any wait? Is there anybody in this congregation that can relate with what I just said about a madman following you? Esti, now give Esti the microphone. Sometimes when we teach these things, it's so abstract people don't even believe you exist. Esti, please help us. Uh, please come up the stage so that they will not say we are creating one voice inside the congregation. Come, it's a living human being. And this ST, we met at work in the office in Abuja. This, we started Bible study that time. So I know this believer. She's an old Christian. When did you give your life to Christ? Please. 1992. In 1992. Okay, so this is an old believer. So please tell us your, your story. Hallelujah. So it started in 1999 in my final year. I started having, I noticed these, would I say, thoughts, inability to control my mind. To coordinate your mind. Yes, that was my final year. Now that's the confusion that I'm talking about. The law, the law that the priest that is governing their family put in, I'm just interpreting what she's saying. The law that they put in place, which are all written laws, you may not know. One of those laws might be that no one should maybe make a first class. No one should make second class upper. And if it is as though you want to make second class upper, some strange symptoms will now follow you. What did you score? Second class upper. Second class upper. So when, when it's as if you want to violate that limitation that was set in motion by this altar, those symptoms, and she is, it came on her as a believer. Is this so? Yes, okay, go So I, I... Now listen, you don't have these causes, these things that judgments that come from these altars, it is possible for you as a believer to see the symptoms of their presence on your life. Are you there? It's possible. In some cases, may not even manifest but in some cases it can manifest and if it does manifest it means there is you need to set up your own altar to counteract that altar that is manifesting in your life okay please so the whole of first semester i was concerning with it just managing it after the first semester i didn't go home because it was really so i Anyway, bottom line, I had to um, push my final semester one year ahead. And there were these, you know, attacks, attacks, a lot of, I couldn't finish with my mates. That's what I'm saying. I had to come back. So, but subsequently, after all that, I started having this dream. A mad person would be chasing me. Either a mad woman, a mad boy, a mad girl, a mad man. A believer? Yes, sir. Are you spoken tongues? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what in now, now, don't just think she was just a normal believer. She, a consecrated believer. I know this lady who worked in the same office. The, a real consecrated Jesus filled believer. Had this masquerade, that, uh, mad, mad guys chasing her all around in those spiritual experiences. Yes. Starting 1999. So it kept on like that. I was praying. 
And to no avail. It was not until 2016, sir. Now, but you did your 2 1. Yes, sir. I she yes. broke, because she I, broke that law that they didn't want her to break. I discovered that one year I took from school, they were taking me to a number of places and it was getting progressively diabolical. Okay, so they then, were, apart from the Jesus solution, they took her to. <laughs> they were starting to take me to places that I knew were not it. And if you are trying to say, please, mommy, don't let's not do this. It looks like you, say, you, are are the the one one. you are the wizard that is trying to withhold your solution, you know, withhold your deliverance. So let me say this at this point. You cannot use Satan to point Satan. If you go to look for help from Satan is an insult to God, God is going to take his hands off your life. Yeah. and allow you to run the rat race. Mm -hmm. So, so the last wait, thing. let's discuss as, as your beloved mommy was taking you to places, the symptoms increased. Yes, it, they, it, were, they were still there. Okay. So the last two places were more or less like White garment, white garment, white garment pastors that had kept their rights <laughs> and we don't want them to cross that places because I, you know, money, <laughs> I stayed I stayed in the facility so you could see what these guys were doing behind the scene. In fact it was God that had mercy on me and telling you God. Oh you stayed in the yes, white last in the God had mercy on me that God had mercy on me. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So the God, summary is that God, God had mercy on me. <laughs> I was not to give you an I was not to give you an You know, so when, when And the God had mercy on me. <laughs> so I insisted that I had to I now made up my own mind that this thing I'm not going to allow you to go beyond this. Now, now, make up your mind tonight. It is possible for you to make up your mind. Yes, you went here, you went here, you did this, you did. Just make up your mind. Yes. If you can make up your mind. Yes. This week, this week, as we journey together, this week, the Lord will touch. He will touch that matter. He will touch it. Because, like I said, I saw that it was deteriorating, and I knew that if. I allow this thing to continue. It's going to take another turn that it's going to get ugly. So I decided, I said, no, it's okay. I'm not allowing this to continue. So I went back to school. I finished. But the, the, that dream persisted. That was when the dream actually started. You know, so, so how did it continued. The dream that's what I'm doing. So in 2016, that's from 1999, I'm 17 years. Yes, I shared this testimony then when we were in tents. In 2016, in the dream one night, I saw that I was running as usual. You know, this time it was a mad woman that was chasing me and I was running. So as I was running in the dream, I started hearing in my spirit, how long will you run, Tony? How long? If you keep on running like this, this is how you might end up running all your life. Why don't you turn around and face this thing once and for all? That's what we are going to do tonight. We are going to so, turn around and we will face it. Yes, sir. So as I was the day you gain, you gain sufficient masculinity and you decide that I want to face this, you will discover that the thing that you are running away from is actually afraid of you. Yes. So, I started thinking to myself, I said, it's true. So, in the dream, I turned around and faced the woman. And when I turned around and faced her, she was surprised. You know, she was taking her back. She, she just, I was, she just fell below. The devil is not step. expecting that you'll be bold enough to confront her. Yes. He's expecting that you will use the cheap way out. You keep running, you keep fleeing from him. But if you find that courage to stand against him, you just find that he doesn't have as much capacity as he 
claims that he has. So, when I turned around, what I discovered was that the Holy Ghost took over. I just knew that scriptures, I just started speaking the word of God to this woman. Now, and believe you me. The moment you turn around, then the Holy Ghost will take over. The moment you decide that enough is enough, the Holy Spirit will take over. The moment you say, okay, I cannot continue this way, the Holy Ghost will take over. And sincerely, I must confess, the scriptures that were coming, I didn't even know where they were coming from. It's like he just took over my vocal cords. I didn't know these scriptures, but I knew it was the word of God. And I was just speaking and speaking. So the man, the man was speaking to the woman that she was dissolving. So she fell and was like entering the ground, you know, dissolving into the ground. And I spoke and woke up. And that was the end of it. That was the end of it. Okay. All right, let me give you one scripture here. Yeah, you can go back with it. I have my own. Because that period was when I was going out with Chris. So I believe. Well, you can add that. You can add. There's another aspect of this reality that you need to be acquainted with. I, I am insisting that she should uh, bring that Amen. aspect up. So this. Yeah? While this was going on, I, um, there was a relationship. She had a relationship with her husband. Then the young man came and said he wanted to get married to me. And sincerely, much later, the Lord started giving me understanding. Um, we didn't go all the way like they say. But we actually started doing some things that were started a job. not right in the sense of the Lord. <laughs> And I think you arrived at the destination. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, the Lord help, the Lord help. <laughs> So I just want to thank God because later the Lord gave me understanding that it's like whatever the person did, if I had yielded, if I had done that, if I had gone on that route, then this affliction that madness would have. have in fact, please. the fact that that guy was in her life was what kept the madness. May you be bold enough to break free from anything entangling your soul, fighting for the place of the Lord in your life. You see, God, the Holy Spirit will be telling you, you will feel me that this, this is not what I have made for you. But you know, as a grown-up girl of your age, you don't want to look like someone that is without a man, that is interested in you, so you believe that in society, it is socially correct for someone to be hanging around your life. That person hanging might be the open door through which Satan is hanging. Clear the space so that the real one can come in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help us. Now this is the, what I want you to see before we pray. Can you turn your Bible to Acts chapter 23? Acts chapter 23. We'll read from verse number 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves with a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Now, these people are taking, they are sacrifices that they have decided to take on. Because it is, it is, why do they have to bind themselves with that, with an oath that they will not eat or drink? Saying that they wanted to kill Paul as assassins was enough trouble. But they added sacrifice to it. They added sacrifice to it because they will not just attempt, they know that Paul is a spiritual person, so they need to put some sacrifice on the table to get spiritual backing so that they can kill Paul. And as long as they refuse to kill, they have not killed Paul, the sacrifices will continue. This is the determination that witches use. This is a determination that men of darkness use to 
to halt their prey. But the average Christian is a freestyle person. He doesn't understand the way of sacrifice. And so he never ascends into great intensity in the things of the Spirit. If someone takes an oath that he will not eat or drink until you are dead, how do you find that person? Have you thought about it? Are you, you want to eat everything? You see mango. You see mango. See mango. <laughs> everything is attractive to you. Everything. We are someone has taken an oath. We will not eat. We will not drink until we have killed all. You also take a note. You also become determined. You also have a position of sacrifice in view. Oh my God. Can we pray? take my stand you are going to take a stand in the spirit that your ministry will not just break through like that, no you will take an oath, you will take a stand you will bring sacrifice on the table you will bring sacrifice on the table on the table, the question tonight is what do you bring what do you bring what do you bring what do you bring, do you bring? God brought his son that king killed his son on the wall. What do you bring? What do you bring? Uh, oh my. Are you that determined? Are you that determined? Are you that determined? That this year, this year, this year, this year, the changes that you seek will begin to happen. Are you that determined? That the changes we seek in Nigeria will begin to, to find expression. Are you that determined? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? What do you bring? I bring the sacrifice. The sacrifice of, of prayer. I bring the sacrifice of fasting. I bring the sacrifice of night prayer. Night prayer. I take sleep from my eyes. I will only eat afflicted bread. Something like Gary. Not because I cannot afford anything I want. But I bring something on the table. My, my, my adventure into the realm of the spirit is not without sacrifice. All right, thank you. And I hope that uh, this clip really blesses and transforms your life. If you do, don't forget to hit that subscription button and turn on your notification so that you will not miss any of our daily upload. Once again, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, may God Almighty bless and keep you.